Welcome back from Las Vegas. I'm Mandy here with John Miller, CEO and co-founder of Halcyon. Um, how is Vegas treating you so far? It's very hot, <laughs> but it's nice in the right. hotel. It's true. I know yeah. we get all the air conditioning all the time. Yeah, it makes great, it pleasant. Great conference though. A lot of uh, really interesting people here this year. Really? Mm -hmm feeling a lot of good traction and getting to talk with people? Yep, yep, lots of customers, meet new people. Um, you know, overall, I, this is my 26th year in a row coming out. Is it out really? For, well, it was DEF CON before Black right. Hat started, but yeah, right. a lot of years. Wow, congratulations, yeah. that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I would imagine that you have a lot of people excited to speak with you in Halcyon because you focus on ransomware. Yeah, it's 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 kind of the gaping head wound of our industry right now, right? Sure. And uh, um, there are lots of companies that you know want to talk about it and how their technology has some portion that's applicable to ransomware. But Halcyon was really the first company to focus on ransomware specifically as a threat, mm -hmm. the threat actors, and then build a solution that isn't trying to do everything, just mitigate that risk of ransomware to enterprises. Oh man, and giving a little bit of control back to the practitioners that are faced with it and being inundated with it in the last few years. Well, and, and the, the fact that you have an attacker essentially that has more resources than any other attacker before. These groups are bringing in billions of dollars of revenue and they're business, right? So as long as the cash is flowing in, they can reinvest that in you know, new techniques, zero-day mm -hmm. vulnerabilities, stuff like that, that make them so much more, not only dangerous, but capable than the majority of the attackers people have dealt with in the last 20, 25 years in, in the industry. So interesting, because the entry point to being able to actually pull off some really big operations is, it's so much lower than what it used to be. Yeah, well, automation has really come in, right? So. You know, 20 years ago, if you wanted to carry out an attack like this, you had to build everything yourself, step by step. Sure. And it worked when, you know, the, it was a task that was big enough for a single person or small group. But now, as security has evolved, it takes, uh, you know, larger or more sophisticated teams. Um, and it's, it's really kind of changed the paradigm where they now have automation where the amount of destruction, essentially, they mm -hmm. can deliver, the skill set to deliver it is not only lower than it's ever been, it keeps getting lower, right? Mm -hmm. They keep making it easier, they keep making it more available. And, you know, ultimately we're all the ones suffering. Absolutely, and on that, so baseline question, is ransomware as a problem still growing? I mean, ransomware as a problem is growing faster than any other problem I've ever seen before. <laughs> Fully right? agree, and yes. <laughs> and it's, it's funny because, um, you know, running a, a ransomware company, uh, especially during COVID, there was a lot of uh, chatter that ransomware mm -hmm. was going down, right? Payments were going down. And essentially what happened is, um, you know, legislation was passed and people stopped talking about it. Okay. And so there was this false lull in the industry that like, oh, this problem's getting better, where in reality it was getting worse and worse. It, it's just people weren't as free to talk about it as they were before. And do you feel like that kind of correlated with the ransomware as a service providers taking that time to pull back and really get more organized? I, I mean, so each ransomware group is kind of different, right? And they'll have, you know, capabilities, uh, they'll run campaigns, sometimes they'll stop, retool, and then launch new campaigns. Um, but I think really uh, what made everyone feel there was a lull is a lack of visibility, right? It's really hard to see what's going on in other people's networks, especially if they don't want to share that information with you. Mm -hmm. And now that the ransomware groups are going more into extortion and double extortion True, and, right. and, and trying to uh, kind of uh, defame brands, right? It's just you're seeing more and more of a pullback and people trying to deal with it kind of internally or, or with their insurance companies and it's not mm -hmm. uh, necessarily getting the public attention that it want, once did unless it's, you know, something like Hop where they're just going hog wild. And a personal question, do you feel like there is any more shame around why people hold back on that they are a victim of ransomware versus other types of breaches or issues? So 
That's an actually a really interesting question, right? Because you have different maturity levels. The different ransomware groups normally target an industry and uh, companies of similar size and composition, right? So you'll have you know groups like Lockbit that target big companies. Right? And go. Ahead, will you list some of the biggest ransomware as a service organizations that you've seen? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, oh geez, uh, Lockbit, Clop. Uh, I mean, we've been dealing with Akira, Phobos a lot, uh, you know, Royal. Um, I mean, there's there's just so, so many of them, right? Like, you mm -hmm. could we could be here all afternoon just listing off names. Um, <laughs> the interesting thing is when it when it comes to capabilities, the the really advanced groups like like Lockbit, when you compare their capability to a less advanced group, mm -hmm. right? That you know is going after SMBs and are asking for ransoms in tens of thousands of dollars right. instead of millions. Essentially, the tech is still very, very similar, okay. right? It's more the, the maturation of the organization, right? Like, for the first time, these aren't individual criminal actors. These are companies, right, with CEOs and employees and people have roles. Yes. And, yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's a completely different paradigm than we've really dealt with before in, in the cyber industry. Absolutely, and in that, I feel like it, when I was doing research and you're learning more about what's going on with ransomware, really understanding that ransomware as a service was becoming such a, grabbing such a viable foothold as an organizational model for people to continue to be successful in the nefarious acts, yeah. it it blows my mind. It's a it's a channel sales model, right? <laughs> yes. I've built the software. You go out and sell the software. I take a piece. You take a piece, <laughs> right? I mean, and it, like it gives them that scale, right? They can scale much much wider than uh, you know what they can do as a, a lone group. And then those those affiliates, right? The ones where you know you're not necessarily part of Lockbit or Akira. Mm -hmm. But you join them and they give you the the tools to use. <laughs> right. You end up as a group where, you know, you have multiple different ransomwares you can throw. Like I, you know, I, I was talking to a customer this week, where um, they were under a ransomware attack, and the attackers couldn't get the ransomware to run. Mm -hmm. So mid attack, they pivoted to another piece of ransomware. Just a completely different group. It was okay. the same guys because they bought you know access from a broker and. And they were in multiple affiliate networks, but it, I mean, it really builds a business that sets them up to win, especially with the fact that there's no consequence, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, <laughs> these people that are doing it aren't hiding. I, uh, uh, I for forget the guy's name, but it's uh, uh, one of the big ransomware groups, group leaders, the guy in uh, Russia, he has a, a Lamborghini with the license plate thief is his personalized okay. license plate. And there's videos of him doing donuts around the police in his Lamborghini because he's there's nothing. He's untouchable, right? He's paid off the right people, he's above the law, mm -hmm. and he's an internet personality for it. So in that I feel like a lot of times with the ransomware groups, it's a modern iteration of being part of organized crime. I mean, it's that yeah, it's whole- extortion. It's yeah. extortion. Extortion is a business. It's sexy, it's interesting because it's like being part of the mob, but you have so many more layers of protection. So these people do stuff that the, would make the mafia vomit, right? Never in, and, and maybe this is just my background from watching mafia movies. <laughs> Never would the mafia attack civilians. Mm -hmm. Never would they attack a hospital and kill. There's an honor code. There's a respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There's, you know, they're, they're trying to do business. These people have no ethical compass whatsoever, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's all about profit and finding the most vulnerable and exploiting that, which is, you know, sad that there's nothing socially or legally that's really countering that. It's mm -hmm. just continuing to grow and grow unchecked. Wow. Um, I mean, so you're answering all this. Like, why is it effective? Yeah, I, I mean, so a lot of it comes down to capability, right? The um, ransomware shares more similarities with nation state APT level malware okay. than anything okay. else, right? Okay. 
the majority of these people do have ties to the Russian government and have worked on Russian government, you know, cyber offensive operations. And so they have those, those techniques, right, that are essentially used to only be reserved for governments hacking governments, mm-hmm. right? And now you're seeing those super sophisticated techniques just dovetailing straight into cybercrime, right? And the majority, the majority of the industry, the majority of our tech isn't really built to protect against the threat of tomorrow. True. It's built to protect against the threat of yesterday. It's already noted, yeah. Yeah, right? What we've already been burned with. And um, it's, it's really easy for attackers, essentially, to exploit that. If you're willing to go to the the higher fruit on the tree, they're they're bigger and juicier because nobody's ever picked them. Wow! And so, how has Halcyon positioned itself to help security practitioners? Yeah, well, I, the key thing is for the first time ever, we looked at the actual attackers. We didn't want to be the security product that solved every issue, right? And so, we took a look at those 300 ransomware groups. Mm-hmm took apart all of their software and said, what are their vulnerabilities, right? What is it in their software that we can do to make make it incompatible, right? Make it not work. What can we do to offset the catastrophic risk that comes after they go in and encrypt all of your machines? And so by focusing specifically on that threat group and their, their tactics, we've been able to build something that's not only, you know, more effective at stopping the specific class of threat, I'm not going to say that we stop everything, but we do better than everyone else at, at not only stopping ransomware, but we're the first product ever to offer resiliency against it, right? So That's if your entire stack fails, if Halcyon mm-hmm. fails you and your, your machines are encrypted and you're a retailer or a manufacturer or a hospital, um, the Halcyon agent itself recovers that endpoint in minutes, right? Wow. So we actually capture the encryption keys that they use to encrypt the files and then our agent just reaches out and uses those to decrypt everything and then restore the the machine to a pristine state oh my goodness well then i hope definitely that you get more reach and into industrial control systems for sure oh yeah we're 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 working a lot i mean the 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 industries that are really affected right now that we're working with the most are you know the the utilities the control Mm -hmm. systems right um healthcare uh, manufacturing, retail, and then education, right? Like they're, it, it's one of those no ethical compass type Correct. of things, right? Correct. They have, schools don't normally have the same level of maturity as an enterprise. And so you have whole groups that are just going in there and exploiting it, right? I mean, the LA Unified School District right. is a, a huge example. I mean, the C- Costa Rican government went down, right? Like they are, their hacks and their impact just are going to continue to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, do you feel that that is um, a challenge for security practitioners and those of us who really enjoy securing and be trying to do better for the world? Yeah. Um, that we don't even have that mindset of going to that depraved level, level, you know, the depravity of I'm going to attack the things that are critical for life. I. I feel like the security industry has been great over the last 20 years at theorizing those possibilities, Mm -hmm. right? Security was really sold on the fear of something bad could happen, Mm -hmm. right? And now what we're seeing is bad things are actually happening. This is happening. And they're pushing, um, so you, I think of it like a wave, to be honest, where attackers build new techniques the defensive controls come in, those techniques stop working, the threat goes down until they build a new one and you've got mm-hmm. a new wave and, and so on and so on. And what we're seeing now, because these guys have so much money and so much resources and it and means it, those waves are getting closer and closer together to the point where they're coming up with a new technique and before somebody can necessarily come in and, and block it, there's a new one and a new one. Right. Right. So the, the game of cat and mouse is getting more kind of aggressive and fast paced than it's ever been before in the industry. Absolutely. So a very quick summary um, with Halcyon being at that edge of constantly trying to help 
stem the impact that ransomware is having constantly. Yeah. What is a key takeaway that you would like our audience to have, especially about effectively um, stopping? Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, the industry started off with protection as the message. We're going to protect you. And then about 10 years ago, they decided that you can't protect everything, right? So the theory of EDR came in, mm -hmm. detect and respond. Um, that paradigm doesn't necessarily work anymore. It works in a lot of cases, but it doesn't work in all of these, these ransomware scenarios. And that's really what we tried to address with Halcyon, right? Coming in and building a, a platform that's extendable you know, ag against this threat, but offering resiliency for the first time in an endpoint, where if we fail, you're not destroyed, right? You're you're not losing millions of dollars of business every hour. Right. It's something that you recover from, you respond to, but we just eliminate that that catastrophic business impact. So in the event that it happens, I, it sounds like Halcyon is providing kind of a silver lining that at least there's something to go back to. There's, we'll get you back and we'll get you back so quick that it doesn't impact your business. If you're a retailer mm -hmm. and um, you know your POS system gets ransomware, we can actually recover that so quickly that your customer is not gonna walk out of the store, right? Which completely changes yeah. you know that that impact and you know takes a lot of the weight out um the the newest feature um that, that we're actually beta testing with customers right now is what we call ransomware dlp right mm -hmm. so it's protection against the data exfiltration that these guys do mm -hmm. so before they actually ransom the machines they'll come in steal the data and that's how you get the double extortion, right? I was going to say, so that helps protect against the double extortion. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, okay. you know, we're, we're building, I don't want to say slowly, but at a medium pace, right? We're building, think of it like concentric circles of protection out from the, the business risk impact of ransomware. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. So thank you so much for being with us, John. Thanks for the time. Um, and for everyone in our audience, please look at securityweekly.com backslash Halcyon BH to get more information. And from Vegas, I'm Mandy with Security Weekly. Goodbye. Thank you.